We were promised a bonfire of EU laws, but that seems to have been extinguished. Business Secretary Kemi Badenoch says it's impossible for this government to push through plans to ditch all of the EU laws because of the Whitehall blob. Instead, only 600 out of 4,800 EU laws will face scrapping or reform. The Prime Minister has been accused of breaking his promise to ditch the laws by GB News' very own Jacob Rees-Mogg, who initially drew up the original bill saying the blob has triumphed. Well, join me now is political commentator Matthew Stadlin and former Brexit Party MEP Ben Habib. Let's start with you, Ben, if we could. I know you've been a very outspoken critic of the way the Conservatives have handled Brexit over Northern Ireland. Of course, you took the government to court over that and over fishing. But the bonfire of the laws is now turning into a funeral pyre for the Tories. They're not getting <laughs> the job done. Well, they haven't. Uh, before I address that, can I just trot through a couple of other legal implications sure. of the Brexit that we've got? The first, as you've touched on, is that Northern Ireland has been left behind in the EU single market for goods. It is subject to foreign laws made by a foreign legislature and enforced by a foreign court. It is, in effect, the annexation of Northern Ireland. And, of course, the Irish Sea border, which Rishi Sunak wishes to mask with his false Windsor framework, which he claims to be a solution to the protocol, but is actually just reinforcing the protocol with some bells and whistles. That Irish Sea border will become starker and starker the more Great Britain, that's England, Scotland and Wales, yep. diverges from the EU. So there's a big incentive in government not to do anything now which would actually deliver Brexit for at least Great Britain because it, ex it accentuates the difference between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. Yep. And these 4,800 laws, let's just get one thing straight. There was a slight error in your auto queue, if I may say so. Mm. These are not all the EU laws. This is a very narrow body of EU laws. These are EU regulations that were made by the EU Commission um, uh, without any say-so, without any debate with our parliament, which every member state was required to adopt. There are thousands of other EU laws on our statute books, which we're not even beginning to tackle. And in a sense, these are the easiest laws to ditch mm. because they weren't made with British national interest in mind. Okay. They were made with EU interest in mind. And seven years on from the Brexit vote, these should all have gone and we should have had laws made for British national interest, not for the EU. Matthew, I want to bring you in there. Um, is this um, an inevitability? Um, did Brexiteers promise something they can never deliver on? I suspect so, and it's certainly a broken pledge by the Prime Minister, and that's not going to play well with his base. And on, on that, Ben and I would agree. I, I challenge Ben and his criticism of the Windsor Agreement, because I don't know what your alternative to that was or is. Well, put the would, customs would, border where it should so be, it, which is between Northern Ireland and, words, and the Republic. Was, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. So you, you, you would destroy the Good Friday Agreement. No, the Good Friday hard, Agreement. You've got a hard border Matt, on the island of Ireland. Matt, that, Can you that, understand? Let me finish, Matt, because let, you've let, had your say. Matthew, let Matthew <laughs> say. Go the, the, the fact oh. is, I voted for Remain. I can understand <laughs> there are some good reasons for Brexit. I was quite persuaded by the sovereignty argument. A lot of Remainers watching will hate me for that. I voted with my head and not my heart. And I realised, for example, the disaster that Brexit could have been if mishandled for the island of Ireland and for the peace process. But going back to these 4,000 yeah. laws or regulations that are not going to be subject to a bonfire, some of them will, but not all of them will. As I say, that will play badly with the Tory base, badly with Brexiteers, but I think it's a good thing. Why do I think it's a good thing? Because there is plenty of good law, no doubt, within those laws. We took them in to our legal system as a sovereign country. We gave up our EU membership in order to regain, in the eyes of Brexiteers, some sovereignty that we'd, we'd given up in, in their eyes. We don't want to trade that then to give power immediately and directly to the executive, whether that's a Tory government, a Labour government, a Lab Lib government. We want our elected representatives that we have all voted for to scrutinise these laws before they are abolished in the Houses of Parliament. We want parliamentary sovereignty. We don't want our EU status to be replaced by an overweening executive. OK, but Ben, surely 4,800 laws sounds like a lot. There's a damn lot of civil servants too. Um, my maths work out that if they could do eight of these laws per day between them, we'd have got this through in time. Is this a case of the blob 
acting like a Remain resistance. Uh, I, I'm reluctant to blame the civil service. You're absolutely right. We've got 530,000 people working in the civil service, up from 480,000 13 years ago. There's no shortage of people to scrutinise these laws and advise ministers. But the fundamental failing here is a cabinet that hasn't got the courage to actually give effect to Brexit. They don't want to deviate from the EU because they, they fear, they, f they must have a complete lack of self-confidence. They fear governing themselves. They fear the effect on Northern Ireland. And by the way, putting the border, the Good Friday Agreement, just to be utterly clear, recognises that border. It is not a hard border to have customs checks across the border. What, what, what the Republic of Ireland early on recognised was if they could capture the economic interests of Northern Ireland through the protocol, they would then politically and constitutionally capture Northern Ireland. That's what the whole okay, debate th is th about. That, that, that I'm afraid. That is, a, that is a fundamental failing in the understanding of Remainers. You talk ben, about the importance okay, of sovereignty. Let, 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 let Matthew, we've given up, let we've given up Northern Ireland. Look, you're a highly intelligent person. You've got a good grasp of all this stuff. But that is, I'm afraid, that element of it is La La Land. You go and do a tour of Ireland and ask them whether having customs checks on the border between the North and the South and tell them that it's not a hard border. You'll be laughed out of that country. On the regulations, and this is really important, Kevin Bannanock, the Trade Secretary, she went over the head of Parliament, which is why the Speaker was so angry with her. I don't know whether you saw the clip clip or, yeah. or, on social media and elsewhere this week. I think he went too far. I don't think he should have been shouting at someone, let alone shouting at, uh, at a woman. But the reason she went over the head of parliament and went directly to the Telegraph was so that she could have a headline saying that the Tories had been frustrated mm -hmm. by the blob because she's trying to regain some face, save some face with, 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 the, to with the Tory backbenchers, ben, but also with, yeah. with all the, also with the Tory base. This is really important. Ben says these are narrow regulations. Isn't it? It's not narrow. It affects work. It affects trade. It affects business. Matt, it they are narrow. The environment, it affects food. We want they to have are a narrow. world in which our rights are protected. You, you talk about parliamentary, the importance of parliamentary scrutiny. These laws were made without any parliamentary scrutiny. They were foisted on the, on the United Kingdom with EU interests in mind. They should be the first laws to go. And I find it really interesting that you say that if I were to go to the Republic of Ireland and ask them about a customs border, they would say I'm in la-la land. I don't care what the Republic of Ireland thinks. That's the problem. I don't That's care. What I care about is Northern Ireland and British citizens in Northern Ireland. Ask people in Northern Ireland whether they want I, to have a hard border. It's they not a hard border. It is a hard it border. Is everyone agrees checks. that. Everyone no, agrees. No, that it's a, a Remainer narrative. That's not it's true. a Remainer narrative. That's fake news. It's, it's an emotive word. Ben, that's wrong. You are wrong. Simon Coveney. Foreign Secretary of Republic of Ireland is on the record saying he wouldn't uh, tolerate customs checks even if they were in Ballymena. And in case you don't know the geography of Northern Ireland, Ballymena is quite a long way from the border. The point is, what they want is to break the United Kingdom, put what you Who would wants define... This? Who wants this? What you, Who wants to re break up the... The nationalists, the Republicans wants? and the EU. They want... The, the EU is on the record... Michael Barnier is on the record saying that the cost of Brexit will be Northern Ireland. Come back on this but Matt, this is when you yeah. say that it's a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic, you are prepared as a British citizen to put an equally hard border between Great Britain and Northern the Ireland. Frankly, prepared, I find that offensive. The only person Matthew. who's prepared to do that as a British citizen, well, the only people who are prepared to do that are Brexiteers in the first place because they dismiss the concerns of Ireland in the build-up to the election. People were repeatedly... We bent over backwards people for Ireland. Ireland. repeatedly asked about the effect on the peace agreement, on the Good Friday peace agreement. Are you saying... You ignored it. The consequences are you saying there would be violence? They're on your Are you shoulder. saying there would be violence? It is a order to have checks. Are and you saying suggest, there would be nationalist and, and suggest, violence? And to suggest that there are... To suggest that 4,000 laws are a narrow tranche of laws when, as I say, they affect a whole range of things, including our health and safety at work, transport, food, agriculture... They're relatively narrow. That's another example of La-La Land. Well, I mean, you, you go on about La-La Land... These are laws made by the EU so let's for the EU. Them. They so were let's made by the EU for the EU. Them. The reason I say they're narrow is because they were not made with British national interests in mind. Right, so let's scrutinise them before we get rid now, of let's, them. I want to ask you a question. Why are you scared of parliamentary I, democracy? I'm not scared of it. Surely I want to ask you a question. That's Brexit, isn't it? P what I wanted was to get rid of the unelected bureaucrats in Brussels and, and replace part, them with the executive part, in the UK and, or, or, and, and ignore you, can I parliamentary your, sovereignty. Are you going to let me answer ignore your question? Ignore our elected representatives? Let, let Ben and Pop. Yeah. So you're arguing that laws made by unelected officials in Brussels 
shouldn't be ditched by our elected officials in the United Kingdom. Is that what you're arguing? I am arguing that our, our elected representatives, our MPs, the 650 Why? or whatever... Let me finish. You asked me a yeah. question. Yeah. See, well, otherwise, we're going to get nowhere, right? OK, so we, we've got 650 MPs or whatever it is now. I want those people... 650. Not, 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 not yeah. the executive. 650, yes. Not the executive, not the government, to, to scrutinise these laws that we're about to abolish. Because otherwise, we have Kemi Badenoch and Rishi Sunak and whoever else in charge of... They're the elected they're, government. No, they are the government, but we have parliament for a reason. Are you suggesting you don't want to live in a parliamentary no, democracy? I, I thought that's absurd, why you wanted Brexit. It is, an, it is an absurd proposition that government exercising the authority, it has been conveyed by being it's elected into... Weaning authority. Okay, guys, guys. Not, guys um, yeah. so, so One ben, last question. Ben, 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 you, hang, hang, yeah. hang on, I'll put it to you. So, so yeah. wrapping up, yeah. um, are the Tories <laughs> going to salvage this or is this a bonfire of them? Look. The Tories never delivered Brexit. You can't claim you delivered Brexit by leaving Northern Ireland behind mm. uh, under foreign jurisdiction. So we never got Brexit. Mm. This is the Tories now pivoting completely away from Brexit. Mm. And if we get a Labour government, we're going to go into dynamic alignment on regulations and Brexit will be dead. OK, final word to you, Matthew Stadlin. No, I, came, I came into the studio today not expecting such a, a, a feisty disagreement mm. because I thought this is actually quite complicated and quite nuanced. And that is precisely why I want our MPs to have some oversight here before we start abolishing all sorts of important legislation, which I may agree with you, was imposed upon us with, with our agreement, with our tacit agreement by the EU. I don't want the government simply to say, because it wants to appeal to its right-wing base, we're going to scrap it's all not this right good law. Wing. We're going to scrap all this good law. I want our MPs. Why should we fear our own MPs? You voted I for MP. I our own MP. MPs. My MP. But I Martin think voted government for should do his Let's job. Let's allow for parliamentary sovereignty. That was one of the key reasons Brexiteers voted for Brexit. Let's follow through with that.